When I was a kid, I used to try to get my sister, an avid feminist at the time, to react to comments like, in general, men are stronger than women. It would usually work, and my short-lived laugh turned into an hour-long argument. She always said that men are just socially conditioned to be stronger than women, and while I never argued against the fact that society pressures certain groups of people into doing certain things, for example men lifting weights, eating mouthfuls of whey protein, and injecting themselves with male hormones, I also would argue that the biology between men and women is different. Just look at our bodies for one. As much as I would love to have a set of fun bags on my chest to play with, it would just never happen without the injection of female hormones or plastic surgery. You see, one of the problems with the question of whether or not gender is socially constructed is that the people who answer it most passionately generally overlook the arguments on the opposing sides. Feminists tend to disregard many biological factors, while naturists tend to overlook sociocultural factors. <laughs> Hello everyone, Thought Monkey here. Today we're going to explore both sides of the argument of whether or not gender is a social construct and try to come up with some kind of conclusion. First, some history and background. Gender is a term that was created as a way to differentiate between biological sex, whether or not you have an Italian salami or a hoo-ha, versus the psychological, social, cultural, and behavioral characteristics associated with being female or male. In recent years, many social scientists have begun to believe that gender identity is not a stable and fixed trait. They argue that it is socially constructed and can vary over time. Some have even argued that there are more than two genders and have created additional classifications by using terms such as cisgender, transgender, genderqueer, non-binary, genderfluid, agender, etc. Anyways, the two competing ideas about whether gender is a social construct come from the familiar nature versus nurture debate. In other words, is it our environment that makes us who we are or our biology? Those who say gender is a social construct often argue the following. Number one, there are differences in gender norms in different cultures. For example, there are subcultures in India that identify three genders, and in Chile, some believe that you must channel another gender to accomplish certain tasks. The list goes on. According to the academics Candace West and Don Zimmerman, gender is an emergent feature of social situations, both as an outcome of and a rationale for various social arrangements, and as a means of legitimating one of the most fundamental divisions of society. By the way, I looked up Candace West on RateMyProfessor.com and she only got 2.1 out of 5. Would you eat at a restaurant that got such a low Yelp score? I didn't think so. Old Don didn't do much better. Another argument on the nurture side of the debate is that language forms our reality. The words man and woman are simply words to describe certain phenomenon, but don't describe every option or experience of all people in our culture. Phrases like be a man or boys don't cry are used to pressure boys into conforming to traditional masculine gender roles while run like a girl and other women-centered phrases pressures girls into behaving in a way that is considered traditionally feminine. Others say that gender is a feature of nature, not nurture. They say that being exposed to testosterone and estrogen will make the way we behave inherently different. For example, there are studies that show male babies and female babies behave differently given different stimulus. Male babies tend to stare longer at mechanical objects, while female babies tend to stare longer at faces, which may explain why women and men tend to find themselves in different career paths. Men often gravitate toward science and engineering, while women toward healthcare and education. Another argument is that the reason some women and men identify as a gender opposite of their sex is because sometimes nature has hiccups. For example, some female fetuses are exposed to large quantities of male hormones and develop something called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, a fancy term for a disease that may alter the sex organs of people. Also, there are members of the trans community that believe gender is biological. Some trans women have stated that while they were brought into this world as men, from the get-go they felt biologically that they were women and thus behaved as a woman. Their argument is that if gender was socially constructed, then as a boy who felt like a girl, they would have been socially pressured into feeling like and behaving like boys. However, despite being socially pressured into feeling like boys, these transgender women have always felt like women despite their sex being male. Another argument is based on a story of a boy named David Reamer, whose circumcision went horribly wrong. He was given sex reassignment surgery at 22 months old and was raised as a girl named Brenda. Brenda was given girl toys but always seemed to gravitate toward more traditionally boy toys. Eventually as a teenager, she expressed suicidal thoughts to her parents and her father told her what had happened. Despite the female hormones and socialized pressures to be a girl, Brenda identified as a male and changed her name back to David when she was 14 years old. Years later, David started treatment to reverse the reassignment given to him as a 22-month-old baby and married a woman. Unfortunately, years later, after battling with a failed marriage and depression, at 38 years old he killed himself. This shows that despite the social pressures on David of his parents and doctors to identify and behave as a girl, he still felt like a boy. 
Those who argue nature over nurture also say that men and women are inherently equal, but differ in biology. Their environment and society plays a part in how we behave, like how boys are given blue and girls given pink, but most research shows that biology is the reason there are major differences in how each gender behaves. Because of this, society follows biology, not the other way around. Women have less sexual partners because there have been more severe consequences for choosing the wrong mate, birth, and then at least 15 years of caretaking. Society then stigmatizes women who don't follow a biological norm because our brains are wired for 100,000 years ago, not for a society that has technology that allows us to practice safe sex where choosing the wrong mate no longer bears the consequence of a life followed by years of caretaking. Finally, if there are differences in how each sex looks, there must be differences in how we behave. Males tend to have more muscle mass than women, probably due to the amount of testosterone that they have. The hormones in a man's body must have an effect on their brains and how they think, thus how they act. Similarly, the amount of estrogen in a woman's body must have an effect on a woman's brain, how they think, and thus act. Of course, there are exceptions. Some women are going to have more muscle mass than some men, and some men will want to act more as a caretaker than some women. So now that you have heard the arguments on both sides, what is the solution to such divergent ways of thinking? Should we categorize every difference of every individual into different genders? I think most people would disagree, as that would lead to more divisiveness and complications. Why would it help to have to classify more people into different categories and learn more terms? Language has historically simplified itself, not the other way around. So instead of breaking male and female up into seven or more classifications, why not just simplify it even more? Instead of being male and female, let's all just be ale. Oh wait, that's already a word. Whatever, can't we all just get along, agree to disagree, agree there are some differences that are biological and some that are socially constructed and just get on with life? After all, there are more important things to deal with like finding a good affordable restaurant nearby when a friend is in town visiting. Thank you for listening. Please hit the thumbs up button below if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to stay updated for more Thought Monkey content.